Konnichiwa everyone! Today's video will be a little bit different from all of the videos that we have uploaded so far because I am not out and about today. I am actually shooting from home! Hello! <laughs> so yes, my hair is no longer blonde and it is much shorter than before. But anyway, this video is a summary of our whole local train travel trip here in Japan from Tokyo, specifically Shibuya down to Yokohama and all the way to Nagasaki on the fifth day. And I will also be sharing and detailing how much we spent for the entire trip. So if you haven't watched the videos yet, I'm hoping this video will make you consider watching all of the episodes. And if you have watched the videos, I just want to say thank you so much and I really appreciate you coming along with our journey. It was so much fun, I loved it so much, and I'm hoping this video will make you want to do the same exact trip in the future if you do decide to come to Japan or if you're already here. So without much further ado, my name is Hannah and this is What You Hannah Do, Japan Train Travel, Summary and Expenses! Woo! Okay, there's nowhere to go. What You Hannah Do, What You Hannah Do when they come for you! Wow, that was so much more embarrassing on camera! On day one, we made Yokohama our official starting point for the whole trip. We got our Seishin Juhachikipu or youthful 18 tickets for 12,050 yen each for the whole trip, which makes it 2,410 yen per day. First, we traveled from Yokohama to Numazu. We had breakfast at Uogashi Maruten Uogashi Ten near the harbor, and to get to the harbor, we took a bus. The bus was 200 yen each. Please bear in mind that there are two of us in this trip, so whenever we ate, it was for the both of us always. For breakfast, we had the tempura tower rice bowl, the chu toro sushi, and the tekamaki rice bowl. This was, for me, the most delicious meal we had during the entire trip. Though everything else was a pretty close second, except for that fugu bento we had on the fourth day. That definitely came in last place. After having breakfast, we took another bus to get to Sembom Matsubara. We walked around for a bit, struggled with the wind, and then walked back to Numazu Station. After Numazu, we took a quick stop at Hamamatsu. Since Hamamatsu is a music instrument hub, we went to the Hamamatsu Museum of Musical Instruments. It cost us 800 yen per person to get in. After enjoying the museum, we left Hamamatsu and headed for Bentenjima. Bentenjima! Doesn't that sound like an anime? Anyway, we just really wanted to look around and didn't really do much except for fight with the wind and sand, so that didn't cost anything. It was free! After Bentenjima, we said goodbye to Shizuoka Prefecture and entered Aichi. We went to Nagoya City to see Nagoya Castle. It was so beautiful! The admission fee is 500 yen per person, but unfortunately we weren't able to go inside the castle itself since we got to Nagoya pretty late in the afternoon. The castle grounds still made it totally worth it though. There was even a summer festival happening, so that was really fun to experience. We had to take a couple of trains in Nagoya City though, because it wasn't a part of the Seishin Juhachikipu tickets. We took three trains in total, so that cost us 660 yen each. After Nagoya Castle, we went to Sakae just to look around and see a view of the city, and then headed back to Nagoya Station to make our way to Kyoto. Kyoto was our final stop for the day. Oh, and by the way, for this whole trip, we booked our hotels during our train rides, especially the longer ones. The reason why we didn't book the hotels in advance before our trip was because we really didn't know where we would end up for the day. Thankfully, since we booked our hotels kind of late in the day every day, we were able to find some cheaper deals. So in Kyoto, we ended up staying in a hotel near Kamogawa River and that cost us 4,704 yen for the both of us. Pretty good deal, right? So for our first day, we spent 18,054 yen for the both of us, or 9,027 yen per person. Day two. On day two, we started in Kyoto. We spent the morning going around Yasaka Jinja, which was gorgeous and free. Walked through the streets of Gion and enjoyed the best matcha kakigori I've ever had in my life in Marukyu Koyamayen. Honestly, it wasn't super cheap, but I'm telling you, it's so worth it. Guys, I cannot stress enough how good that shaved ice was. 
I, 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 I dream of it sometimes. Oh, and his Japanese sweets with the iced matcha was 1,200 yen. After satisfying our matcha cravings, we left Kyoto and went to Nara to visit the deer. But before enjoying our time with the deer, we had to go to one of the most popular temples in Japan, also the largest, so we made Todaiji our target. I was so in awe of how big the temple is and just couldn't get over it. So to take my mind away from that a bit, we made friends with a deer. Be my new friend. <clears throat> I made friends with a deer. This is Leia. This is Phil. And that's George. And we couldn't leave Nara without feeding the deer, so that's what we did. It was 200 yen for the shika senbei, or rice crackers for the deer. So yeah, that was also 200 yen to have a mini heart attack. I really was afraid that they would bite my butt because I have heard of some stories and I was only wearing workout leggings. Not much protection from deer bites. The buses we used around Nara cost us 440 yen each. And after running away from the deer, we were starving, so we headed to Osaka to eat some really delicious okonomiyaki. We didn't just eat okonomiyaki, we also ate omusoba, tonpeyaki, and negiyaki. I, I know, we eat a lot. I have a pretty big appetite and so does he, hence all the food we eat. In our defense, we only had one big meal a day in this trip. And of course, we still had a lot of energy after that, so we decided to make Kobe our last stop for the day. We spent a bit of time at Starbucks enjoying some drinks and a cake pop with a lovely night view of the harbor. After a lovely walk in the port area, we headed back to our hotel and called it a day. Our hotel was 7,650 yen. Day 2 cost us a total of 23,703 yen or 11,852 yen per person. Day three. Day three. Ooh. Day three was a long one. We spent no time in Kobe and at 7 a.m. left for Himeji. Himeji Castle is really well known because of how large it is, so we made that our first stop for the day. Loved it. But since we were too early, we weren't able to go in in, so that was free. I just realized we were never able to get to go inside any castles in this trip. Just the castle grounds, but hey. Still stunning. The day had just started and I was already feeling the hype. I knew it was going to be a great day. Hello. After visiting Himeji, we went to Okayama, the land of yummy peaches and mouth-watering muscat grapes. We stopped by Okayama Station to say hello to my boy Momotaro and eat some kibidango to see how Momotaro was able to get his sidekicks to join him to defeat the ogres. And then we left. That's all we did there. Guys, the next stop was probably one of my favorite stops in this trip, and it is Kurashiki! I think one of the reasons why it caught me off guard was because I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what we were going to see, so I had no expectations at all. It ended up blowing my mind. It was crazy beautiful, and the desserts that I ate in that really charming cafe, fantastic. Those muscat grapes, Really something else. So heavy, so dense, so delicious. 20 out of 10. Dessert and drinks were 3,170 yen. So to burn all that sugar, we hiked up Mount Tsurugata to see Achi Shrine. Also saw a nice view of Kurashiki City. I also bought my first souvenirs of this trip here, which cost me 1,298 yen. Not sure if you guys were interested in that, but there you go. I really wanted more time in Kurashiki, but we still had a long way to go. Next, we went to Onomichi, this really cool place that has sea and mountains so close to each other. It was such a unique place. We had our big meal for the day, which was Onomichi ramen and some fried rice, extremely flavorful and yummy, and then took a cable car to get to Senkoji. I was so amazed at this temple, like, how did they even build this temple on top of a large hill in between all of these large rocks? Amazing! Ah, oh, I, ah, oh, I was just so oh, floored by everything. And, ah, oh, the view? Mmm, chef's kiss. After doing our best to absorb all of that, we made our way back to the station to go to our last stop for the day, Hiroshima. We took a really cool tram to our hotel, which was kind of near Hiroshima Memorial Peace Park, and went to bed. 
So this day, we spent a total of 17,190 yen, or 8,595 yen per person. This is minus the souvenirs I bought though. <laughs> day four. Okay, now on to day four. Day four was fun, but I think I whined a little too much. The weather wasn't ideal, but it wasn't too bad. We went around Hiroshima Memorial Peace Park and that was completely free because we were not able to go to any museum since we left Hiroshima pretty early. We took a tram to Hiroshima Station since it was raining and headed to Miyajima. We had to take a ferry to the island so that cost us 300 yen per person round trip. We didn't know at this time that one of the ferries was under Japan Railways as well, so actually we could have used the station Juhachikipu tickets. Anyway, we got to Miyajima and went around. We first went to Itsukushima Shrine and the admission fee was 1000 yen per person. I will put the links to the official websites of the shrines and temples that we went to down below so that you can check other fees if you will be going with kids or students. The prices will be a bit different. Itsukushima Shrine was probably the most surreal shrine for me. It was a dream and just truly gorgeous. And at one point, I did kind of forget that I was not able to see its otori gate. Well, just for a little bit. We had a couple of snacks in Miyajima as well. The Miyajima Digansu, Miyajima Jake, the Kolo Kolo Momiji, and the deep fried fish cake. The yummy food cheered me up because I was so heartbroken about not seeing the Otori Gate, so that was great. And after whining a little bit more, we left the island. We knew we had a three and a half hour long train ride ahead of us, so we couldn't really stay much longer. We headed for Shimonoseki, bought some blowfish goods, a bento box and dried snacks, and then took another train ride to our last stop for the day, Hakata. Hakata is popular for its food, specifically their tonkotsu ramen, so we had to have that. He had tonkotsu ramen, and I had yaki ramen, both very, very delicious. And actually, when I was editing that video, we ended up craving for thin noodle ramen. Anyway, stuffed, we headed to our little business hotel, which cost us 7,722 yen, and rested our very tired selves. Day 4 cost us 20,322 yen in total, or 10,161 yen per person. So far, not bad for two people, right? In day 5. Woo. On to day 5 and 6. Woo. Day 5 was definitely a doozy. The day started out well with some super yummy breakfast, which was deep fried sea bream for me. That ponzu sauce was divine and he had some mackerel and miso sauce, which was equally as delicious. I guess this was the best part of our day because when we started our travel to Nagasaki, the weather got significantly worse. Warnings of floods in the area and our train had to stop. After waiting at that station for a bit, the railway company provided the passengers that decided to wait six premium buses to get us all to Nagasaki. And that was all free. Talk about Japan being amazing when it comes to customer service. We got to Nagasaki after another three hours on the bus. I didn't have clips of us eating dinner anymore, which was just a couple of burgers from a fast food chain store in the food court adjacent to Nagasaki station. That cost us 2,000 yen. We were really beat at this point, so we just checked in and went straight to bed. Our hotel this time cost us 7,262 yen, which was a pretty good deal because it included hotel buffet breakfast for the next morning. The next day, we got up, ate breakfast, got ready, and headed to the airport. Since it was our sixth day, the Seishun Juhachikipu tickets were no longer valid. We took the bus to the airport, which cost us 1,000 yen per person, and then flew home. Our plane tickets were technically free because we used miles to pay for it, but it would have cost us around 20,000 yen per person to Haneda Airport in Tokyo. Not all airlines cost that much. We just based the price off of the airline that we took, but for a low-cost carrier, it can go as low as around 5,000 to 6,000 yen per person. So, day 5 and 6 cost us 18,482 yen for two, or 9,241 yen per person. So that's it you guys, that was the whole awesome trip that we had. 
We spent a grand total of 97,751 yen for two, or 48,876 yen per person. We did our best to be very thrifty, but we definitely splurged on food. We didn't bother spending too much on the hotels because we would always check in quite late anyway and leave really early the next day. So what do you guys think? Do you think it was inexpensive? Or expensive for a five-day trip for two across Japan? Would you consider going on a trip like this? Let me know in the comments down below. I would really love to know. Oh, and by the way, I will put a downloadable PDF down below with all the trains that we took from Tokyo to Nagasaki in a cute little infographic that I made for you guys, just in case you want to take the same exact trip in the future, going to the same exact places. And I wish you would because it was pretty amazing. Like I said, I had so much fun. My mind was blown with just how beautiful Japan is and I want you to do I want you to do it. I want you to do it. And if you do, please, please, please let me know because I would love to hear all about it. And um, of course, thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, click like down below. And if you want to see more content about Japan, you know what to do. So until next time, Janet and see you in the next video. Woo! I have nowhere to go. Outro!